How you doing, Harry? Clean and press. Sure. Can I have him back by Monday? Yeah, no problem. Do me a favor, Harry. Throw this away. Oh, I'll do you one better. Can I ask you a question? It's none of my business. Those are the best kind. How come you saved the cans and the paper and the junk? They recycle the stuff, Manny. They grind it all up and they use it all over again. People think you're crazy, Harry. They like you, but they think you're crazy. See you Monday. Congratulations, Sydney. You beat me again. Thank you, Howard. Oh, hi, Sydney. Hello, David. Oh, you look happy. I just won a case. You've been winning a lot of cases lately. That's what I'm paid to do. Sydney, you're made of steel.
Thanks. Cheers. Yeah. Hey, Cindy, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Kindergarten was hell today. They finger painted all over me. Hey, 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 what is bothering you? I don't know. I don't know, really. I mean, I'm really becoming a star. Every time I win a case, I get a job offer from the losing firm. Things couldn't be better. It's really happening for me, Roberta. And maybe you can tell me why it is every time I win a case, I duck into the ladies' room and cry. I mean, is that the dumbest thing you ever heard? Have you ever thought you might rather be celebrating with someone besides me? What do you mean? You're my best friend. Who could I possibly want to be with more than you? A man? A man? Yeah. They're those people who wear pants and have muscles. Some of them belch a lot. And Roberta, you've been reading too many paperback novels. Well, how would you date with Mike Espen? He has false teeth. Lots of people have false teeth. Yeah, I know, but I kept getting these little breezes in my face. Uh-huh. You heard from Tony Benson? I won't see him again. He's a communist. Oh? He always eats in Hungarian restaurants. Ah, uh, well, then of course he's a communist. Unless possibly he's Hungarian. Sydney, you never go out with anyone twice. Roberta, that's not true. I saw Harold Graboff twice, until I found out he was gay. Gay? Well, he knew every waiter at the steak pub. He kept doing little things with their eyes all night long. Really? Sydney, you know what? You're just scared. Roberta, if I was scared, I never would have gone to law school with 300 men. Uh-huh. And you never let one of them get close to you. Now, that's not true. Have you forgotten about Larry Gordon? I really loved Larry Gordon. You know I did. So did his wife, Sydney. That was hardly my fault. The thing is, you either avoid men, or you pick impossible ones to get involved with. Look, you know how they say your best friend won't tell you? Well, I'm your best friend, and I'm telling you. Look, Roberta, I appreciate your thoughtfulness, but you have it all wrong. I'm not afraid. I, I just choose not to have a serious relationship with a man at this time. Oh, OK, then. Tell me this. Why do you duck into the bathroom and cry? I guess it's the only place left to have a quiet moment to yourself. Hi, John. Oh, good. I'm failing in Spanish. What? And I definitely do not have tuberculosis. Well, that's good. No bottles today? No, nobody brought any. They gave TB tests at school today. They should give VD tests. Put out the bird feed? Yep. Good. Daddy, yeah. Mother wants to get back with you. She didn't ask me to say that. Laura. You see those ducks over there on the grass? Mm-hmm. Well, when your mom was here, I couldn't look at them. Because she'd tell me how silly it was. But, Daddy, you must have watched birds before you got married. Yeah. People fall in love with your differences. And six months later, they want you to say your lines the way they wrote them. I wonder why birds seem so happy. They never get depressed. They never get headaches. They just find a mate, lay their eggs, take good care of their babies, 
and sing wonderful songs all day long. Hey, geese mate for life. Bet you didn't know that. I guess people can't do that. What are you doing later? I have a date with Alan. Alan who? Alan Roth. <laughs> Roberta, you talk about your boyfriends as if I knew them. I thought I told you about Alan. Oh, yeah, you told me about Alan. You tell me about all of them. I have yet to meet one of them. Well, you're always so busy. I cleared my vacation with the office. Those dates are fine. Did you see the travel agent? Yeah, she had a terrific idea where we should go. I thought we were going to the Caribbean. I don't want to go to the Caribbean. Look, I thought this was all decided last week. Well, I changed my mind. Why? I'm bored with it. All right, well, where did you have in mind? Well, the travel agent told me about this fabulous place in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Something a little different. New people, great scenery, high up in the mountains. You're gonna love it. Sydney, it's a bird-watching camp. A what? That's right. Oh, you're kidding. You're not kidding. year here. It's the last place on earth for total solitude. It's nature. It's totally unspoiled. I hate nature. I like Central Park, but that's different. I'm Harry McLean. I have a dry cleaning shop. It was a family business, now it's mine. I wanted to go to law school, but my folks needed me, so, you know, you do what you have to. The world could use fewer lawyers anyway. Sydney Wyatt. I'm an attorney. Ah. What is this? What is that? My thermos bottle leaked. My pants are ruined. Oh, God, all my alfalfa tea is These gone. These are my favorite pants. I'll never get them clean. Oh, it'll now. come out. Look at that. Trust me, I'm a dry cleaner here. Oh. No, blot. Don't rub. What? Blot. Don't rub. Hi there. Hi. Welcome. Hi there. Welcome 
the Highland Bird in Nature Camp. Hi, hi, Step Lively. Hi there, welcome. Welcome, hi, how you be? Yeah, right over there. Hi, right in, good enough. Hi there. Welcome. Nice to see you. Move right along. Hi. Welcome. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi, well, nice to see you. Yeah, same here. Hi, welcome to Highland Bird and Nature Camp. Right that way. Hi. Oh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. I'm up here. Oh. Hope you all had a nice trip. I want to welcome you all to camp. Life up here is probably different than you know it. It's kind of rough. But you'll make it. We haven't lost anybody yet. <laughs> I'll be down in just a second. matching me up. Uh, the weather here is changeable, so keep one eye on the clouds and the other one on your rain gear. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Max. Uh, the women's cabins are over there, and the men's cabins are that way. Of course, we don't expect you to stay separated all the time. <laughs> Well, if you'll all pick up your luggage and we'll go to our cabins. Mine over there. bed? This isn't a bed. This is a stretcher. I can't sleep on this. Cindy, you slept on the same kind of cot when we were at summer camp. Summer camp was 20 years ago. We discovered the moon and pantyhose since then. I cannot sleep on this. Call Bloomingdale. what you did? I'm, I'm sorry. Those were Bob White quail. Well, I'm sorry. Really? Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I think this is yours. Oh, thanks. And look, about your tea spilling on me, I, I didn't mean to be such a brat. Oh, that's okay. I respect a person who says they're wrong. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Hey, have you ever seen an eagle? What? Have you ever seen an eagle? Of course, on stamps. No, I mean a real eagle. Yes, on stamps. You don't seem happy here. Yeah, yeah. Is it the no, I was going to be in a bad mood the whole That's week. not the point, Roberta. This is not my idea of a perfect vacation. Fine. Look, fine. Oh, come on. Well, you're going to love it after a night. Nice you feel love it. Here comes your friend. Sydney. Roberta. He smiled at you. He smiled at me. Did he smile at you? I just saw him. at you. He was not. Half on your side, it was half on mine. Good evening, ladies. Oh, hi. Could we all have a moment of prayer? Hi. Shh. Oh, I'm not religious. Thank you. I like it here. It's dry. I'm from Pensacola, Florida. It's very humid there. Oh, 
three from being. You and Nora living together or what? What's your thing? We've been married 40 years. <laughs> Nobody's been married 40 years. My old man and I just split up. Yes, we did. No, thank you. We were saving up to buy a house. Trash compactor, family room, and everything. Know what he did with the money when I left? Bought a Porsche. Yes, it's true. Please. Sometimes you can love somebody better when you're not with them, you know? Bill and I have been together for a very long time. And we're more in love than ever. <laughs> oh, you just say that. Do you mind if I ask you a question? No. How long is your life list? What? Your life list. It's the list of how many birds one has spotted in one's lifetime. Oh, well, I haven't spotted any. A virgin birder. You have many wonderful years ahead of you. I myself have spotted over 533 species. I'll tell you a secret. I am on the trail of the Hudsonian godwit. It's very rare. It was nearly extinct. But I have reason to believe it is here now. I can see why you're so excited. Of course, it won't be easy. They rarely chirp. I'm going out tomorrow at dawn. Would you like to come? Maybe another time. Okay. But it will be a pity if I see him and you don't. Good morning. Hope you're all rested and ready. Before I divide you into groups, I'd like you to meet your nature teacher, Erica. Hi. That was your nature teacher, Erica. Well, now, this morning I'm dividing all you new people into three smaller groups. You'll do all your field work together. Uh, from here over, please follow me over this way. Okay? You'll meet here every day, and you'll be the thrushes. Now, from here back over, follow me over here. From here. And you'll be the sparrows. Meet here every morning. Now, all of you good people, come with me over this way. And you'll be the wild turkeys. I think you'll all be very happy this way. Now, please introduce yourself and get to know each other. He looks so thoughtful. Thoughtful. I think he looks dumb. Sidney, trust me. Go talk to him. Why? Just introduce yourself. What am I supposed to say? Hello. I'm Sidney Wyatt. Hi. I'm from New York City. <laughs> Eight million lives in the naked city, and every one of them has a story to tell. Uh, there are ten million now. They're all telling their stories. That's why they're two million shrinks. Two million shrinks. Hike much at home? Oh, yeah. I uh, hike from 86th Street all the way to 81st Street. I can't get a cab. I might go as far as 79th. Uh, have, uh, have you been here before? Mm, this is my first time. <laughs> Me too. You've got to try everything once. <laughs> I'm in uh, politics. It's a crazy life. Must be. Well, I'm not a candidate. 
No, I work for the Independent Party in Atlanta. Uh -huh. My folks were Democrats. Of course, when I was young, I tried everything right wing, left wing, middle wing, communism. I have read them all, Marx, Buckley, Kissinger, Trotsky, Abzug. Yeah, they're all phases. You see, politics is it's just a mirror of our insides, you know? It's, it's all elliptical. Excuse me, I, I just got to tie my shoelaces. That's okay, you, you go on ahead. Don't wait. Hi. Hi. You're cute. I'm a dry cleaner. Some of the cutest men I've ever met have been dry cleaners. Some have been druggists. Oh, one was a blacksmith. Oh, well, that's a long story. <laughs> I teach kindergarten. Yeah? Oh, yes. I start four- and five-year-olds on a lifetime path of scholarship, leadership, and integrity. I also pour juice. Are you divorced? Yes. She, uh, let's see. Uh, ah, you married her young, and about two years ago... One year ago. One year ago. She decided to split. She got, uh, restless. Yeah. She left you. You didn't leave her. How did you know that? I can't imagine a dry cleaner dumping on his wife. to getting up at 6 a.m. I just sleep a little later now. Can I have some of your water, please? Oh, yeah. where's yours? I didn't bring any. I, I never drink water during the day. Just coffee. Uh, Sydney. Sydney, that's all the water I have. Oh. That's all the water I have. Excuse me. Oh. Thank you. That's empty. Oh, well, there's probably a little river or stream up here somewhere. There always is. Otherwise, the, the movies lie. How could you do that? How could you do that? How? A lunch. You were told to pack a lunch. Well, I know, but I never have lunch in New York. You know, I have yogurt or a piece of fruit, maybe, but never, never lunch. like I'm meeting the Hope Diamond.
back. What do you mean, go back? Oh, I just got a little winded. I needed a bite to eat. I can hold my breath 60 seconds underwater. Harry, wait! Captain of the girls' riding team. Straight A's in health and hot. <laughs> Sydney, uh, let's try to put this in perspective. Harry, please! It won't be painful. You'll suffer dehydration. But it won't start for a few hours at least because you drank all my water. And starvation won't start for a while either because um, you ate half my lunch. You'll probably go into a coma. But after that, you're home free. Harry, please don't joke. Look at that eagle! I am about to fall down this mountain. Notice his eyes, how fierce they are. Look. Okay, I looked at the eagle. Now, would you please help me up? Well, I'm busy right this minute, Sydney. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Erica. Oh, uh, Max. Yes? I want to be put into a different group. Is anything wrong? Well, look, um, I met everyone in the wild turkeys, and I'd like to meet some new people. You met everybody in your group in two days? Yes. Uh, okay. You can be a thrush. Anything to make you happy. Max. Can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, Harry. Can you put me in a different group? Have you met everybody in your group, too? <laughs> I changed groups. I did it out of respect for both of us. I did the same thing. Look, I'll try and make it my business to stay out of your way and not involve you. I'd appreciate it if you do the same. Is that fair enough? Fine. Look, I don't think we should talk. That seems to be where we start going wrong, OK? You know how to tell whether a politician is telling the truth or not. When he makes a speech, uh, watch his wife. If, if, if he's lying, it shows on her face. It, it, it's very hard on them because basically they, they were honest women when they were single. This is his feather. Whose? The Hudsonian Godwit is here. Huh? Did you know that I was a Goldwater Republican and a uh, McGovern Democrat? I can't believe it. Yeah, well, it's, kind of, uh, it's contradictory, I know, but if you examine it carefully, both men were saying the very same thing. Look! Another one! Oh, yeah, they're uh, all, all over the place. I think the reason I've been in politics as long as I have is because I'm, I'm not cynical. I, I refuse to let myself harden. Basically, I have a lot of faith in people. That's right. Just roll your pants all the way up above your knees. Way up high. Good, good. Okay? Now, I want you to look in the pond for horsehair worms. If you've never seen one before, you have a wonderful treat in store. 
I think of all of nature's creatures, a horsehair worm is the one that most inspires me personally. I kind of hope after today, some of you might agree with me. Uh, Sydney, where are you going? I don't like worms. Well, you will like these. If I see one worm, I'm going to puke all over this lake. I'm going to take a walk. <laughs> okay, come on, folks. Let's go. Take it easy. together. You look good together. Handsome pair, you really are. No. 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 And down to the bottom with an arch to the bottom and come back through all the way through two by two. Special, Cindy, y'all requested it. <laughs> Come on now, we got another couple over here we need. You're all gonna feel a whole lot more like you do now than you did a little while ago. There we go. Come on now. Circle up. Soon as the band's ready. Ready, boy. Sashay around the court, girl, back and swing your own. Alabama look at the court, girl, promenade your partner home. Get on home, get on home, get on home. Sing, sing, we are swinging you sometimes. Head coming, head coming right on through. 
Sydney, she is incredible. She graduated in the top 5% of her class at Columbia Law School. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Not only that, but she had a part-time job on the side so she could pay her way through school. Uh -huh. She's a great way with people. You know what I mean? Firm, yet available for comment. Sure. She has some really interesting ideas, Max. Why don't you go talk to her? Okay. You know, up here we say when something hurts, you should press on it and make it hurt more. Then the original hurt goes away. I think that leg can handle a little walk. Sure. Beautiful night. Yeah. I haven't seen stars like this in years. What do you see when you look up at the sky in New York? Level or blinds. What are those? Where were you born? Here? Here? You mean in camp? No, I was born about 20 miles away. Have you ever been to New York City? No, why would I go there? Oh, it's just a thought. Every now and then, a stranger passes through New York, and I thought... No. It wasn't me. Want to go owling? What's that? Owling. You look at owls. Are you playing dumb? Hi. Well, did you do it? No, we didn't do it. Why not? Because I didn't want to. Oh, Sydney, there's got to be more of a reason than that. Hi. Oh, Max. You scared me. What are you doing up so late? Mm, not sleepy. What's your excuse? Well, really... I was hoping to find you. Me? What about Sydney? I, I, I like you. From the beginning. It's a beautiful night. I mean, it's really clear. Aren't you getting cold? A little. Would you like some coffee? Oh, yes, I would. Come on, I'll make you some. Oh, thanks. Can I take 
tell you something? Well, sure. What? I think you're pretty. Max, don't say that. Why not? Because I'm not pretty. So don't be silly. Max, if you're looking for some quick action, I'm not it. Could we talk for a while? About what? Anything. Doesn't matter. I'd just like to be with you. Listen, I don't get it. I mean, you're beautiful. You're a cigarette billboard. If you never leave these mountains, you could have anybody you wanted. Farrah Fawcett, Bo Derek, Bo Bridges. You know, most of my life when I told a girl I liked her, I thought she was pretty. She always told me who she thought I should be with. It's like, if you happen to be good looking, nobody lets you make your own decisions. Sometimes I think everybody in the world that's handsome or pretty must be really hard up because the rest of the world has decided they're not a good enough match for them. I'm sorry. I still think you're pretty. Max, I'm not. I, look, my hair is like straw. My eyes are too far apart. People always say to me, hey, how'd you break your nose? You know, I, I never did. I talk out of the side of my mouth. I grind my teeth whenever I... Max, I don't know. I really don't. I won't do anything you don't want me to. Max... I haven't, um, had sex very much. You haven't? Sydney said you had a boyfriend. Alan? I invented Alan. I invented lots of men. Men must have asked you out. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sometimes. First on the ground to make sure they're talking to me. Frankly, Max, it just has never been that good for me. <laughs> What's so funny? If Sydney knew what I was doing, she'd die. We better keep this to ourselves. Max was dumb. Yeah. Well, now, I presume that meant you didn't like him. That's right. Good. Because I have to tell you something. Well, uh, last night, I couldn't sleep. So after you went to bed, I took a walk. And I... <sighs> you know, you what? Well, I ran into Max. And, uh, he started walking with me. And so we were walking together. 
One thing led to another. And suddenly, we weren't walking anymore. Yeah. I'm very happy for you, Roberta. A good breakfast means a good day. Something wrong? Wrong. I'll say. Everything's wrong. And every time it goes wrong, Harry McLean, you're right there. Why don't you just leave me alone? everywhere for you. I'm leaving. I'm going home. Today. And you've got to tell me how I can get out of here. Are you ill? No, I'm not ill, Max. I'm fed up. Look, uh, I'm just not cut out for this kind of life. I want to go home to my microwave oven and my little answering machine. Well, Say what you will. Can't provide transportation to town unless it's an emergency. Well, this is an emergency. Look, if I stay here one more day, I'm going to go insane! I can't, Sydney. Okay. Okay, fine. Look, I'll make all my own arrangements. You can't stop me from doing that. You cannot keep me a prisoner here. It's illegal. My name is Wyatt. I'd like to rent a car, please. Yes, I'm, I'm at the Highlands Bird and Nature Camp. No, someone will have to deliver it to me. Well, that's all right. I'll pay the charges. Saturday? Oh, no, no. I need it today. Look, uh, I'll pay cash. I won't even use my credit card. No, no. No, no, never mind. Oh, that's too late. Yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Wyatt. I'd like to rent a car, please. Yes, I'm at the Highlands Bird and Nature Camp. Now, this is a family emergency, and I can't get into town. Sunday. Oh, no, I need it today. Yeah, thank you. I'm stuck. God, I'm stuck. I'm stuck in a bird camp. I'm going to see the Hudsonian Godwit today. I can just feel it. You've got your shirt on backwards. Right. <laughs> Sydney. Sydney, it's time to get up. What time? Six o'clock. Six. In the morning? The red-breasted nuthatches are up. You should be, too. Oh, please. We're taking a field trip today to the Great Smoky Mountain Game Preserve. It's optional, and for anybody who wants to stay behind, lunch and dinner will be served. Oh, 
Sir, would you kindly ask that gentleman if I could borrow the ketchup? Uh, the lady wants to know if she can uh, borrow the ketchup. Maybe the lady would like to borrow the salt and pepper, too. He wants to know if you want the salt and pepper, too. Yes, if he's through with them. Are you through with them? Oh, yes. Thank you. You didn't go to the game preserve. I've been to the Bronx Zoo. Yeah, you didn't miss much. I've been there twice. There's no reason for you to sit around all day and be depressed. How'd you like to go and see a miracle? No, <laughs> no thanks. Oh, come on. All you have to do is take a hike with me. First off, Harry, I don't believe in miracles. Second off, you know me and hiking. And third off, we made an agreement. I think we should keep it. What kind of miracle? Tree. 
the middle? Yeah. Look at the cork. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, don't birds have babies all the time? I was up here three days ago. The mother had abandoned the eggs. Yesterday, I came up here again, and she had returned. She was sitting on them. Is that the miracle? They were left alone for three days. The miracle is that they hatched at all. Harry, it's getting late. Just a little longer. How long can you look at it? The rest of my life. If I didn't have to go back and get the wine stains off Mrs. Luckman's mother of the bride dress. Harry, this isn't the way we came in. Yeah, it is. This isn't the way we came in. No, we came in over there. Oh, Moss. What? Moss. Grows on the north side of trees. We're heading north, so just wait. Harry! This tree has moss all the way around it. Harry, it's getting darker. I'm scared. I really hate to tell you this, but we're lost. I told you so. I knew you'd say that. Do you know where you're going? No. But it's fun, isn't it? If you guided Columbus, he'd have discovered Poland. Harry? Harry, what are we going to do? Well, I guess we'll have to spend the night. Are you joking? You actually expect me to spend the whole night in here? Have you got a better idea? Me? Look, you're the one that got us into this. You and your miracle. We'll be all right. <laughs> I think you're really enjoying this. It's just like some little adventure to you, isn't it? You know something? I haven't been lost in the woods all night since I was a Cub Scout. Harry, you're really queer. Yeah. And I don't mean sexually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, I guess this is a good night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess it is. Oh, yeah. Well, ah, good night. Good night. 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 after midnight. Midnight is the perfect time for snowy owls. Now. Uh, Don't 
worry. They never attack lawyers. I'm sorry. I'm just not a silent sufferer. So I noticed. Oh. Actually, you know, your constant complaining is terribly refreshing. I do not constantly complain. I just see and I feel certain things and I don't let them pass. Oh, don't apologize. I was married to a silent sufferer for 16 years. Good thing you left her. Well, I didn't leave her. She walked out on me. Oh. Yeah, it was the first time she displayed any real energy in our marriage. When Marion turned 38, she announced uh, she wasn't happy with me. She said she wanted a relationship with lots of communication and energy. Which was odd, because Marion herself rarely talked and never moved. Were you upset? Yeah, at first I was. For a week, I walked around the house in tears. Kept thinking, 16 years with a wonderful woman down the drain. And then a funny thing happened. I realized that Marion meant well, but she was never a wonderful woman. I just assumed she was because I loved her. Actually, she was a boring woman, and I never knew it until she left. I guess we, we never see the way things are until the way they are is over. You still see her? Oh, sure. When she brings Laura, that's my daughter, for the weekend. She wants us to get back together. You're not interested? I'm having a wonderful time. For the first time in 16 years, my life isn't a Russian novel. Not that I'm meeting a lot of women, but I've met some. I go out. I sometimes wonder why people think divorce is so sad. Marion wanted to find herself. And I'm the one who wound up getting freed. And you know what I discovered? I really like Harry. Quiet here. You hear the stream? No. No? <laughs> Listen. It's that quiet rush. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking about? You really want to know? I was thinking about Ben Temerson. Ben Temerson wanted to marry me. But he was two inches shorter than I was, and I, I thought I'd have to wear flat shoes all my life. I mean, those were the days of spiked heels, you know. It seemed like such a sacrifice. Who knew they'd invent espadrilles? Harry, I'm cold. Put another log on the fire. When Paul McDowell needed to lose 20 pounds, Dick Schneider wore ascots instead of ties. Then there was Spider Jones. Spider Jones was the most beautiful man I've ever seen in my whole life. So? Well, right up here on the top of his head, he had this little bald spot. Every time I looked at it, it got bigger. So you figured he'd be prematurely bald? Please, he is. I still see him sometimes. He wears a toupee now. I don't know, I made some awful mistakes in my life, but in Spider's case, God was with me. Sometimes I think the only man good enough for me would be God himself. And what if he snored? <laughs> Here, 
know something, Sidney? I don't believe a word you said. I think they're excuses. I think you'll find hundreds more because you are very clever. It isn't working for you, is it, Sidney? You know, I've been watching you all week. I think your life works in the courtroom. I think you win every case. And you go home to an empty apartment and you cry. How did you know that? The thing is, I know what's really important, Sydney. It's having somebody rub your back. Somebody to pick you up when you fall off a mountain. Tell you bedtime stories, no matter how old you are. When Marion left, I bought a dog. I wanted this dog to sleep with me on the bed. It wouldn't. Wet the bed and slept on the floor. So I took it back. But at least I think I had the right idea. Harry, please stop. I'll be honest with you, Sydney. I'm not telling you these things for the hell of it. Or so you'll go home a better person. I'm telling you this because... Well, because you're not unattractive and... Uh, God knows you're not dull. You are certainly obnoxious. You define the word hysteria. And you've got to be the clumsiest person I've ever met in my life. Also the most compelling. You wouldn't say that if you really knew me. Sydney, you're building a wall around yourself. Don't do it. Don't. Careful, Mary. You're not dealing with steel here. Just eggshell. something and it scares me I can't say it I mean I can't I can't say it with the sound but I think You don't have to say anything. You don't have to answer.
Sydney, can I help you with that? No, it's all right, Harry. I got it. I'm so upset. I've been here all week and I never saw my god whip. Why don't you just say you saw it? I could never do that. Birders have an honor system. You're crying. Don't cry. Don't cry, Roberta. I didn't want this to be a big, soppy goodbye. And it's a big, soppy goodbye. Are you crying because you're leaving? No, not because of that. No. Don't, don't use your sleeve. Use my sleeve. Uh, thanks. No, I'm crying because you told me I was pretty. And the only people who ever told me that were my parents. Max, will you come see me? I don't think so. I wouldn't promise anyway. We have incredible mountains in New York. The Chrysler Mountain, the Empire State Mountain. It's hard for me to leave. This is God's country. Listen, Max, God's on Madison Avenue, too. He's just a little more expensive. Will you write to me, at least? Sure. Thank you. And, and I don't mean for the sex. Thank you. And I do mean for the sex. Harry, we'll see. I've got a crazy schedule coming up when I get home. I have two cases coming to court on Monday, and I have a million depositions to take. My office is probably in total chaos. Usually is when I've gone away. Sydney, 
I don't get it. Up there on the mountain, we held each other all night long. We made love. Sydney, you said you loved me. I didn't say it, Harry. Well, you mouthed it. Well, there was no audio. You didn't mean it? You didn't mean a word of it? Yes, I meant it. At the time, at the place. Look, I was under duress. Under duress? Harry, it was only one night. You're taking this too seriously. Not anymore, I'm not. I talk to you for a moment? Sure, Howard. You were really something in there. I didn't have a chance. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow, and we can discuss the arrangements for the judgment. Oh, sure. Okay. And if you uh, decide to change firms, please come talk to us, huh? Okay, I will. Thanks. Show me your slides from camp. It's usually the first thing you do when you get home. Yeah, well, I guess I just forgot. Well, will you show them to me now? All right. That's a blue jay nest. And that's the mommy blue jay. There's a waterfall. And that's a lady at the waterfall. I'm in terrible trouble. I'm cracking up. I don't know. I think I'm losing my mind. Sydney, what is it? What's the matter? Sit down. Well, look, I need a drink. Okay. Okay. You have any scotch? This is the home of a fine and cultured lady. It is not a saloon. Do you want a beer? Do you have any wine? Yeah, I think so. I have a date soon, but we can talk until then. Tell me. Well, it's about Harry. Remember Harry from camp? Sure. He was adorable. Roberta, I think it's better if you just listen now and don't editorialize. Well, uh, the last night at camp, I was with Harry. It was an accident. I don't know. We, we, we went for a hike, and we got lost. And we started talking, and you know, I guess I felt pretty comfortable with him because I started telling him about me and about some of my problems. How'd you know which ones to pick? I told him about the men in my life, and... Well, nobody's ever been quite right, you know? The only man good enough for you, Sidney, is God himself. I know, I mentioned that. And he said... He said I was scared and afraid to get close to anyone because... because maybe they would love me. I told you that a month ago. Well, um... Anyway, we, um... 
We made love there. And it was really beautiful. And at the end of it, I, uh, I, I mouthed the words, I love you. You what? I mouthed the words, I love you. That's what I thought you said. Well, I left off the sound so that I wouldn't be committing myself. Anyway, Harry did a very strange thing. He, he just, he took those words at face value. Sydney, you're a brilliant fool. You're a Phi Beta Kappa idiot. Harry was probably the nicest man you had ever known. I think you meant what you said to him. I did? It won't hurt you. I promise it won't hurt you. There's my date. You feel better? You sure? Yes. Jerry Tatum. Hello, Sydney Wyatt. Nice to meet you. How do you do? Of course. Oh, I was uh, just going. Nice meeting you. Where did you find him? Take good care of it. <laughs> good night. Thank you. Laura, put this stuff in the back and let us get out of here. You know how I always break down and cry after I win a case? Well, yesterday I won and I couldn't cry and it's all your fault. Oh, no. Because on account of you, I don't feel unloved anymore. What do you want? You. Uh, Laura, would you excuse us for a moment, please? Harry, listen. I love you. See? I said it out loud. I'm a big girl now. I don't pantomime anymore. Sydney, I'm not going to fall for this again. You'll get afraid and you'll change your mind, just like you did before. No! Harry, look. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. That's what I came to tell you. I'm not afraid of anything. I still have this little thing about botulism, but not you, Harry. All right! Now, look. You cannot refuse my business. Section 2316, paragraph 11, New York Retail Code says that any proprietor cannot arbitrarily refuse any reasonable request from any reasonable customer. What is your request? Give me another chance. That is not a reasonable request. All right. Then would you clean and waterproof my raincoat? Sure. Aha! Uh -huh. You know what that means? What? I have to come back and pick it up. All right, Harry. Look, enough is enough. Now, either you give me another chance, or I'll have to do something about getting this stain off all by myself. What are you doing? Sydney! Uh, Laura, would you get that telephone, please? Sydney, are you crazy? You've already ruined my vacation. What are you trying to do? Ruin my business also? Oh, Harry, look, I noticed I just have a little hole right here. You do reweaving, don't you? Oh, Sydney, will you stop? I'll get the telephone myself, Laura. Sydney, if you want my dad's attention, this is the wrong place. I can tell you what to do, but you'll have to get up early. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, Harry, it's me! Harry, where are you 
going? It's me! Harry, wait! I must be dreaming. Uh, I know I've done this before. Oh. Oh, thanks a million, Harry. Oh. 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 Well, I don't think it's broken. I think it's just sprained. No, I, I, I don't think it's sprained, Harry. I think it's really broken. All right. Let me help you up. Oh. You okay? Yeah. Can you walk on it? Yeah. All right. Uh, How you doing? Okay. Uh-huh. How's it feel now? Well, uh, it's better. Sydney, what am I going to do with you? Marry me. You must have gotten up at 4 in the morning to find me here. 3.57, to be exact. Do you think you could learn to be quiet when you see a Lichtenstein's aureole? Do you think you could learn to keep both feet together and stay upright on the trail? I'll try. Sydney, the bird camp I'm going to next year is in Waxahachie, Texas. Are you game? <laughs> 